In this month's economic update, Kaplan Professional Education's Michael Pollock speaks to an industry economist about the short-term domestic and global economic outlook. Welcome to Kaplan Professional's monthly economic update. I'm Michael Pollock and this month we're speaking with Chief Economist at Sun Super, Brian Parker, about the impacts of persistently low wages growth on the Australian economy. Thanks for joining us today, Brian. Great to have you here. Welcome to Sun Super. We're seeing improvements in business conditions and labour markets, but wages growth and inflation remain stubbornly low. What are the obstacles there? Well, I think those wages numbers are basically telling you that we've still got plenty of spare capacity in the labour market. We've still got plenty of room to grow. But the bottom line is that even though we've seen an improvement in employment, especially full-time employment, um, it's, we don't have an unemployment rate that's kind of low enough to bring about faster wages growth. Now, yes, we have seen uh, better full-time employment numbers in the last little while, but the reality is too many of the jobs we've created over the last, say, year and a half or so have been part-time and that's basically led to higher than normal levels of underemployment and I think that's really keeping a lid on wages at least for the time being. What are the macroeconomic impacts of sustained low wages growth? Well, it's, it's, it really is a two-edged sword. Uh, on the one hand, uh, very low wages growth is terrific for business, and I think this is showing up certainly in the business confidence measures, that it means that businesses are able to keep their labour costs under control. It also means that uh, you can keep low inflation in a very sustained way. But on the other hand, uh, wages really are what people spend. Um, you know, low wages growth makes it difficult for households in Australia to sustain the kind of spending uh, that they've been doing. Um, in fact, the only reason they've been able to sustain their spending growth in the face of very low wages growth is that you've seen a boost to household wealth courtesy of a stronger property market and decent share markets and higher household wealth has basically allowed people to save a lower proportion of their income. Now how long you can keep this up in the face of very low wages growth is really an open question. The August NAB Business Survey's employment measure, an indication of the likely pace of hiring in the period ahead, was at plus 11, a near record. The engines are revving, but why can't businesses seem to get off the start line? Yeah, I think it's right, but I do think it's starting to happen. Um, you know, we have seen this improvement in full-time employment growth. Uh, and what we've also seen, I think, is that there was this big disconnection between the message about the labour market that the NAB survey was telling us and what the official employment figures were saying, at least, up, at least until a few months ago. And you now started to see employment growth really accelerate. Uh, and there now seems to be much more consistency between what the NAB survey is telling us and what the official labour force stats are saying. Now, going forward, uh, uh, if we take the NAB survey at face value, uh, what it's telling you is that employment growth is going to remain pretty solid at around 2 to 2.5% 2 per annum. If anything, there's a risk that it could accelerate further. Now, if that were to occur, uh, you, you are going to see downward pressure on the unemployment rate and you are going to see, at some point, upward pressure on wages. Strong labour market growth coupled with low wages growth is a phenomenon common to many developed economies due to factors such as technological innovation and increases in casual positions. Uh, to what extent is this reflective of an entrenched change in the relationship between wages growth and its determinants? Look, I think in a lot of countries around the world, yes, we certainly are seeing this, that even though we've seen an improvement in the labour market, say, over the last five years or so, in a lot of countries, most notably in Europe, you've actually seen wages slow even further over that time period. Um, now, I'm not sure the world has really changed that much. Now, there's a whole range of reasons that people look to for this sort of slow wage outcomes. You've touched on, on a few of them already. You know, the technological change, etc. Um, I think there's certainly an element of truth to all of that. I also think that low inflation has led to low lower inflation expectations and lower inflation expectations I think are starting to feed through into people's wage and price setting decisions. So in other words workers don't need the kind of wage increases they previously thought they did because they're expecting lower inflation to be here to stay. Um, I also think that in a number of economies it really is a matter of time. Uh, I think that what the numbers are telling us is that there is still enough spare capacity in a range of economies to keep wages under control but how long that lasts is still an open question. Now, you talked about the usual relationships between the labour market and wages, in other words, the Phillips curve, really. Um, you know, have we seen the death of the Phillips curve? Uh, I don't think that's the case at all. In other words, I, I th you could make a case to say the Phillips curve has flattened a bit. In other words, wages are not as responsive to improvements in the unemployment rate. But I don't think the curve is dead flat. I don't buy that at all. Brian, underemployment in Australia has been consistently increasing. What's behind that? 
And since really they started publishing the data in about 78 or so, there has been you know, a big cycle in measures of underemployment or underutilisation of the labour force um, around a broadly upward trend. Um, so if you look at where it is today, it has been higher, most notably in the years after the, the early 90s recession, but it is still elevated. And you've already referred to some of the things that you know, you've seen this increasing casualisation of the workforce, the rise of part-time employment. Now, yes, some people choose to work in a, on a casual basis. Some people choose part-time employment, but the numbers are basically telling you that that is not the main determinant of this trend. It is a genuine underutilisation, and it is helping to keep a lid on wages. Now, given the, the fact that the cycle does live on, and I think we are going to see continued improvement in the labour market, I think you'll also see not just lower unemployment over the coming months, I think you'll also see these measures of underutilisation of the labour force also start to come off. And ultimately, I think that does feed through into faster wages growth. What are the implications of sustained low wages for clients in terms of building superannuation savings? Well, it makes a, a challenging task that much harder. Uh, it means that people have to start earlier uh, and try and put away as much as they can uh, into their superannuation account at an earlier stage to try and meet their retirement goals. And especially, and it's even more challenging when you throw in, say, a substantial capital city mortgage or uh, potentially education expenses into the mix as well. I think it does really does make it clear that people need to start thinking about their superannuation a lot earlier uh, and getting advice a lot earlier to make sure they really make the most of their superannuation and, uh, and their retirement. And what's your outlook for wages growth over the next 12 months? Well, I think given the fact that we are likely to see a further improvement in the labour market, so we are going to see lower unemployment, we are going to see lower levels of underutilisation, I think that does add up to better wage outcomes over the next 6 to 12 months and beyond. Now, whether wages grow at the kind of rates that, say, the Treasury have factored into their budget forecasts, I think that's a, that's a more doubtful proposition. Uh, certainly, the Reserve Bank uh, does have a, a more modest outlook for wages growth, but even the RBA is saying that wages should accelerate from here. I think that's a reasonable expectation. Expectation. I think there's some downside risk to that, but faster wages growth ultimately does provide a good deal of support to consumer spending, makes it easier for consumers to maintain the sort of spending growth that we've seen in the last little while, uh, and it does help underpin what I still think will be a, a continued improvement in the overall economy. Thanks very much for your time today, Brian. Great pleasure. That brings us to the end of the October PD sessions. Thanks for watching. If you have any feedback or questions, please drop us a line at pdcontent at kaplan.edu.au. I'm Ron Wilson. I'll see you again next time.